Hi there, in this class we are going to see how to navigate between screens inside Power Apps. So look at my app right now, we have these buttons, find contact and new contact in the home screen, and I want to navigate to a new screen once I click in the new contact, for example, I want to navigate to the screen where we are going to create new registers. We still don't have this screen, but if I look at my app planning, we can see that we have these two screens still to be created. And when I click in the new contact, I'm going to navigate here to this new and added contact screen. I'm going to create just the basics part of this screen, just the title and the bottom buttons. So I can navigate between this screen, the home screen, to this screen once I click in the new contact and navigate back to the home screen once I click on cancel, right? Let's go back to the app and create a new screen to create that edit contact screen. Right, so here in the app, let's go in the tree view and click on new screen and select blank. Once I click on blank, a new screen will be generated. Let's already rename this screen to edit contact screen. Okay, here I'm going to insert the title. So I'm going to insert a new label, insert classic and then text label. And I'm going to change the text to slash edit contact. Okay. Just change the text property. I'm going to center it, make it bold and increase the font size to 25, let's say. Now I'm going to insert the two buttons in the bottom. So let's insert a button, but here this one will be the save button, so I'm going to double click on it and change the text to save. And now I'm going to insert a new one that's going to be the edit button. So I'm going to insert a button and then just change the text to cancel. Not edit, but cancel. So cancel. Just to make the buttons a little different, as I showed in here, I'm going to change the color of this button to white, so the user can notice that both buttons do different things, makes easier for the user to understand the meaning of the button. So right here, I'm going to click in the button, that's the cancel button, change the color to white, and change the text color to purple. So I'm just inverting the order of the colors. Now, if I hover on it, it still gets this purple. Now let's let's also add a border color to this button. Here it's white, so let's change to this purple one. Now I have a border. We can see the border of the button. If I hover it, it gets this purple color. color. It's fine. And if I click, it's also a darker purple color. Okay, sounds sounds good. Now we already have this screen. We have these three elements we just inserted. Let's, let's rename them just to follow the good practice. This one in the top is a label, so let's start with LBL form title. This will be the form screen. We will have a form here to edit and create new registers. Just a, that's what I'm calling LBL form title. This one will be BTN from button cancel form. And this other one will be BTN submit form. So basically I just clicked in the elements and updated the name here in the properties pane in the side of the page. Now that we have our drafts created for this screen, we can navigate between the home screen and the edit screen. How can we do that? Well, we need to call a function. We need to find a way to call some action to do this navigation between screens. And this is what we do 
And in order to do this, we need to call this function that's called navigate. That will be the first function we are calling here in the app. So let's pay attention and see how it's done. This video is sponsored by the support of my subscribers who like and comment on the videos. This class is part of a full course I have on Udemy where I teach beginners how to build their first apps. So if you want to ensure lifetime access and see the entire course, I suggest you to join me on Udemy. If the course isn't for you, that's okay, but I kindly ask you to show your support by liking this video and subscribe to this channel. Your engagement means a lot to me and motivates me to continue creating valuable content like this. Now, let's get back to the class and continue learning together. For all the elements, not all but most of them, we have one property called onSelect. We have text, colors and etc, but we have one that's called onSelect. For example, I'm going to select this button, the new contact button. And here we can see in the properties one that's right here, the on select. This property means what the app will do once we click on it. Right now there is false, meaning it doesn't do anything, but we can call actions here that will do something for the user. In this case, we want to go to the other screen. And there is this function, navigate, that we tell the app we want to go to the other screen. We want to perform a navigation. So I just type navigate, I'm going to open the parentheses. And now, once I opened, it shows me what are the arguments of the function. And the first one is called targets. Here it gives us the description. So target means the target screen to navigate to. It means that, that I need to inform what screen I want to go. And here it already suggests what are the screens for my app. We have the edit contact, the home screen, the loading screen, and screen one, that's the first screen we first created and we are not going to use. So in this case, once I click on this button, I want to go to the edit contact screen. I'm going to click on it and it will fill this space. Now I can put a comma because I see here in the navigate definition that I have more arguments that I could put. And if I put, I will see what it means. So if I put a comma here, it will show me that the next one is the transition. That it means how the screen will do the transition from one page to the other of the app. That means how the screen will do the transition effect between one page and the other, but this one is optional and we don't need to put anything on it. Let's keep it simple and just delete this comma and close the parentheses. Now that I close the parentheses, the formula is complete and once I click on this button, it will call this formula right here that will make the app navigate to the other screen. Let's play the app and see if it will work. So here I can click on this play button and click on this button right now that has that function in the on select property. So I'm going to click now, clicked, and we are in the next screen. Let's go back to that screen and now put a transition to see how it changes the transition between the screens. Right now, this button doesn't return to the previous page you can imagine that you can put a navigate here too. And there is also another function to go back that we are going to see soon. So hold on. Let's close the play mode and go back manually to the other screen, clicking here in the tree view. And now add the second parameter, that's the navigation. Let's remove the parentheses, add a comma. Here you need to pay attention, depending on the language of your computer, sometimes is a comma and sometimes is a semicolon. Semicolon is this one right here. Okay, for example, in Portuguese, it's a semicolon that divides the arguments, that splits things in Power Apps. But if it's in English, as it's my case right now for my browser language, it's the comma. Okay, so now it's a comma. 
I will delete the comma and put again, so it will suggest the transitions. We have cover, cover right, fades, known, that means no transition, and uncover, and also uncover right. Let's use fades. No, let's use a cover that will show a, it will show better the transition effect. So I select cover, and I'm going to close the parentheses right now. So we have the navigate going to the edit contact screen using the cover transition. Now let's play and see what happens. Now I'm going to click and we see that effect that the screen is sliding over the other screen. That's the cover transition. You can try all the transitions, but right now let's keep this one applied to that app action. Now let's make this screen go back to the home screen once we click on the cancel button. Right now it doesn't do anything, I'm clicking here, because we didn't put anything in the unselect property of it. Let's exit the play mode, select the button, and in the unselect we could put the navigate function, but there is another function that's the back function. So I can just write back, open and close the parentheses, and that will already work. I could also put the effects inside the function. If I just delete the closing parentheses, I will see that we can also add a transition that's the same options, that are the same options as the navigate function uses. So we have cover, cover right, fades, known, and etc. Let's use cover right. So the other one will cover, will slide from the right to the left. And now, cover right, we will slide the screen from left to right. I'm going to select this one and close the parentheses. And now let's see it working. I'm going to play the app and click on the cancel button. And it should go back to the previous screen. So I clicked here, it went back to the home screen. Now I click in the no new contact, it will go to the former screen. And the navigation between the two screens is already implemented. Please note that this back function will return to the previous screen that was used before the user came to this one that's the active right now. So we can use this function to return to other screen. So we can use this function always that we want to return to the previous screen. It doesn't matter where the user came from, it will return always from this screen to the previous used screen. Now that we know how to navigate between screens, we can implement the automatic navigation between this screen and the home screen. In this case, we don't want to put a button for the user to click. So before doing it, we need to learn how to use the timer. That's the next control we are going to learn here inside Power Apps. So see you in the next class.